Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCDUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com. Today I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I got a PlayStation Vita about two, three weeks ago, I'm going to say, and I am loving it. I think it is amazing. It's a great system. Um, I know the library is not so big right now, but um, <clears throat> so that's one of the, the negatives. But if you are into gaming and online gaming and um, some of the touchscreen implementation is, re is really nice, I think uh, most people will dig it. So I'm just going to do a quick rundown. I'm going to point at each game, uh, tell you a little bit about it, and tell you what I like or dislike about it. Um, I guess I'll stick to the likes. I don't want to be too negative. So Plus, there's really not much negative to say. So here we go. Uncharted. Now, this is the big one that everyone went out and bought when the, uh, when the console got released. I just got it a couple weeks ago, so I didn't have a chance to do that. But... Uncharted's really good. Um, if you've played the other games, supposedly it's very similar to them. Um, it's In essence, it's kind of like a 3D platforming shooter. Um, the graphics are great, especially for a uh, handheld system. I'm trying to move my hand so I can see it through the viewfinder. Sorry if it's a little weird. Um, graphics are great for a handheld system. They implemented some of the touch controls pretty nice. Um, the shooting's good. You can get like items and, and I don't know about upgrades, but I had, I'll be honest, I played a little bit of it. I didn't uh, play play too much because I've started playing another game and I just uh, messed around a little bit from what I did play though, I really liked it. So I would definitely check out Uncharted if you haven't. This one, oh my God, what a time sink. Little Big Planet. Now, <clears throat> some people say this is the Definitive Little Big Planet, better than any of the PS3 titles and the PSP title, of course. Um, you can go online and play with people, you can upload levels, you can download levels, you can make any kind of levels you want. I saw hundreds and hundreds of levels. Uh, chances, if you type in any other game, like I typed in Silent Hill because I'm a Silent Hill fan, um, you will find levels based off of a similar, off of that game. They'll make something that's like in the same vein. Um, customization is crazy. There's like it's almost like a game within a game. The touch controls are amazing. You can uh, lift blocks, move things. There's a big collectible portion of the game of getting stickers and getting it items for your avatar, for your sack boy, as you see on the back cover. Um, this game I can't say enough about. I got it for twenty bucks when it was on sale at the uh, GameStop deal. Definitely, definitely worth that. I would have even paid full price and still been happy. Actually, maybe I'll tell you the prices too while I'm at it. Um, Uncharted, I paid 30, 32 for, but the clincher was it came with an 8 gigabyte memory card. So I thought I got a pretty good deal. I think it was 32. So I figured for a game and a memory card, I, I was pretty, pretty good to go. Um, All Stars Battle Royal, I beat it once. I didn't play too much of it, and I don't think I've played online yet from what I remember. But Pretty similar to Smash Brothers, um, a fun little arcade, casual, jumping around, beating things up. Um, it's as simplistic as you want it to be. So you could just keep mashing one button or a couple buttons, or you could do like mid-air moves and combos, and you have to do super moves to beat your opponent. So uh, there's that. To actually get a point, you have to beat your opponent with a super move. But lots of cool characters from some games that have been on the Sony consoles over the years, like Parappa the Rapper, Jack and Daxter. Um, Nathan Drake, Hihachi from Tekken, and my favorite, oh, Sackboy, and my favorite is uh, probably, well, I don't have a favorite yet because I haven't played it enough, but the one I was most interested in playing was Sweet Tooth because I do love the Twisted Metal series. But very, very good casual arcadey game. Um, I'm going to switch up. Let's go down to the bottom here. So, Metal Gear Solid, the HD collection. This collection was initially released on PS3 and 360 um, with the Peace Walker game. I have Peace Walker on PSP, I haven't played it, and I played a little bit of 3 that a friend lent me for 360. I liked it, but it wasn't grasping me, but I always kind of felt that I should give these games another chance. So I had gotten this as a birthday gift, I think, or Christmas gift, Christmas gift. Um, so they probably paid full price. Oh. This was also 20 bucks, by the way. The Battle Royale All Star was $20 the same week that uh, Little Big Planet was $20 at GameStop. So I started playing two. I think so far I like two better than three. Um, it's kind of, you know, they're both kind of goofy in their own way. Three seems a little more open. 
Uh, I just haven't gotten very far in two, so I can't compare them very much. I've definitely gotten further in three on the 360 when I played it. It's all stealth. Um, you can go into it with a little bit of action, but it's primarily stealth. If you don't like stealth-based gameplay, which I don't, um, then it may take some warming up to. But I'm, I'm sure you know the Metal Gear series and the games. Uh, they're good, they're solid, and I definitely need to get back into them. So good stuff. Not my first choice, but definitely something I want to get back into and sit down with. Uh, let's see. Hot Shots Golf. Now, this one I got for like nine bucks on, online and used. Um, really, really good. I mean, you can unlock items and, and balls and uh, clubs for your character. You get little costume uh, enhancements and stuff, and you can even unlock new characters. The thing with this one is, A, it comes with an online pass, as does... Let's see what else. I think Battle Royale was an online pass, but I bought it new, so it was no problem. I hate online passes, by the way. Little Big Planet was an online pass, so I had to buy it new just to make sure I could play online, and that was new, so that's obviously... This one was used, and I didn't get it with an online pass, so sadly I can't play online unless I buy a pass for 10 bucks or I find uh, an online pass to a friend or something. Um, the game's great. The one downfall I would say is it's pretty, pretty difficult. I mean, you have to really get into it, figure out the learning curve, and, uh, you know, get into it and, and understand the mechanics of the game. Is it good? It's great. But it's hard, and it's definitely something that I would pick up and play here and there. It's not something I would play over and over and over and over for hours and hours. But it's definitely a, a good time killer for an hour or two. Um, <clears throat> Unit 13. This I really liked. I picked this up online with Marvel vs. Capcom for 27 use for both. This did not come with an online pass, but I had... Uh, my friend had an online pass that he gave me, so that was a, a no-brain. 27 bucks, two games, not so bad. So Unit 13, I'll start with that one. That is sort of like Metal Gear mixed with Army of Two. It's more action-oriented than Metal Gear, but you get shot a couple times and you die. Um, there's all kinds of missions. There's stealth missions, there's uh, timed-based missions. We have to run through it quickly with like a tank kind of character. There's different characters you can choose from. Uh, then there's the normal missions that you can just do at your own pace and play kind of stealthy, but still like, you know, running gun a bit too. So I would say it's kind of like a more serious Army of Two mixed with Metal Gear, as I said. Um, there's an online daily mission they send you that you have like one shot. You can die and re reload, but if you die and back out of it, you can't do it again. That you can, it uploads the best person in the world for that day. Um, there's online co-op, which I have yet to try. You can upgrade your characters and unlock weapons and pick different weapons to load out your guy when you go into a mission. So this is a cool game. I really I really like this. I'm having a good time with it. The other shooter I've played on the Vita is Call of Duty. Um, I like this better than Call of Duty. I'm not a Call of Duty fan, per se. I like first-person shooters, but uh, I think Call of Duty is getting a bad, a bad rap. I think Call of Duty is getting the shit kicked out of it because people were expecting this really in-depth, high-end FPS, and it's very good. Uh, it's just, you know, it's pretty short, it's a couple hours, the online's really good, but this is probably where I would go for longevity, and there's no, um, it's only co-op online with this one, there's no, uh, versus, but it's very good, and I like it, so I, I would say it's, like I said, a mix between those two titles, Metal Gear and Army of Two. Um, let's see, let's see. Next, I'll go to Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, lots of unlockables, very similar to the um, PS3 and 360 counterparts. Um, lots of things you can download in terms of item, not items, excuse me, uh, colors and costumes and different characters. You can unlock stuff. There's this heroes and herald modes that you can unlock, um, like different costumes for your characters and upload them online and gift them to people. Um, so far, the games I found with the most gifting are. Marvel vs. Capcom, Unit 13, uh, Little Big Planet, I believe, and Uncharted. Gifting is like a, um, it's a way to put things out there on the internet for people to pick up and they can p put things out there for you. So if you're in a certain area, you can pick up items or, or in this case, costumes and they can pick them up or maps or map packs or levels. So um, Marvel vs. Capcom is good. I like it. Online, it's, I get my ass handed to me. I think these people do these combos that are crazy. You can also play it with the touch screen where you just keep tapping the, the other character and he does automatic combos. So that kind of screws things up because if you just keep tapping the other character, they can't get a hidden edgewise 
and they just beat the shit out of you. So it's a good game. I like it. Is it something I can play forever and ever? No, but it's decent, and for what I paid for it, I'm happy. Uh, let's see here. Next, we're going to go with Silent Hill Book of Memories. Now, I was really looking forward to this one. It is different than the other Silent Hill games by far. The most I would comp I would probably compare it to is like a Diablo type game. It's a top-down uh, action RPG where you dungeon crawl and beat the crap out of things and upgrade your guys. The only puzzle I found so far is at the end of each of the levels, you could do a puzzle and throughout the level you'll find notes on that puzzle to try and figure it out. They're similar. Um, they're putting things in order in certain ways like big to small or small to big or top to bottom. They're not that great so far, but you can upgrade your guy, get new levels, upgrade your strength. Um, <clears throat> there's eight zones, which is comprised of three or four sets of rooms I've found out so far. There's over a hundred zones overall, but they just start getting random after zone eight, I think. I think eight is the last zone for you to beat the game. You create your character and customize them slightly and buy new uh, accessories, pick up weapons. The weapons do break. Um, I'm really liking it so far. I think it's really good. People are pissed off. They're saying if you're a real Silent Hill fan, you won't like it. And you know what? If you go into it thinking it's Silent Hill, you probably won't like it. But if you go into it thinking it's a top-down action RPG, kind of like Dungeon Hunter, I think you'll like it. Um, it also has online co-op. The only thing about co-op that I hear is bad is that you can uh, save your experience, and you can save your weapons and your items and your accessories, but you cannot save your levels. So only the host, supposedly, I haven't played it online yet, is able to save their levels. So if I'm the host, I can save my progress and everything, where my friends can only save their experience and their items and weapons. But it's really cool. I like it. I think if you have an open mind and you're not strict with your, uh, you know, your Silent Hill, then I think you'll, you'll dig it. And last but most definitely not least, this has, has become a time sink for me. Virtue's Last Reward is a, it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea, or in my case, cup of coffee. <clears throat> it's a um, visual novel that you have to play through, and um, it's a puzzle game as well. So while you're playing it, you get into these rooms that have puzzles and logic puzzles, and um, some of the puzzles are involved things in the room that give you hints or, or um, answers that you have to use in that room to access different parts of the of the room. Um, there's going to be a couple times I've I know I've done it. We have to look things up, look things up on facts online because they just get really difficult. Um, the story's awesome. There's nine people um, stuck in this like shelter, and to get out, they have to have nine points in this game. <clears throat> Excuse me. To gain points, you have to progress the story, but really, you have to choose who to um, ally or betray in these um, in this like game. The, the game, the story is a little a little uh, in depth. I can't really explain it all, but. Whoever you choose or betray, depending on what you do and what they do, gives you points or negates points from you. And whoever gets nine points first is able to leave the the bunker. Um, really great. I I already did ten hours of it. I've only played like two nights of it. It's uh, there's like about fourteen or fifteen I think different endings. A lot of them you die in and you don't escape, but different endings, different plot twists and people dying and living and, and you have an effect on all this stuff and then you can go back and play the parts that you couldn't finish by with the knowledge you have from the plots you did do or the uh, you know storylines you did do really great I mean if you're into visual novels and anime in a way um, I wouldn't say RPGs because you don't there's no leveling it's like um, I would say anime which I'm not that into Visual novels, like like Snatcher type gameplay, which is awesome. Great, really mind-bending puzzles, and a uh, just twisted story. Great, great game. I, I I can't emphasize enough. So I would say my top favorites so far, probably. Let's see here. Probably these three. I would say I, I've sunk the most time into this one. Just just grabbed me, and I just couldn't put it down. Oh, this game has so much customization. It's amazing. And this one, just if you keep an open mind and, and like visual novels and puzzles, it uh, it's really engrossing. And with all the endings, there's a lot of replay value. They're saying over 50 hours, or 40 or 50 hours. So these are all my video games for now. Thank you very, very much for watching. And um, if there's anything you want to see, please let me know. And uh, I'm going to hope to get up a maybe... I was going to do a more in-depth interview of Book of Memories. I'll probably do that soon because I've been doing all the Silent Hill games and their separate little videos. So... 
Thanks for watching, guys. It's Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com. I hope my phone going off midway through the video didn't distract you too much. And uh, be good, guys. Hope you have very, had a very Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and all that fun stuff. Take care.